What is going on everybody? With From Software releasing banger after banger, copycats were just a matter of time, and we had a lot of them. Bland and boring, interesting but flawed, brutally difficult. In a medieval setting, Japanese setting, futuristic setting. Now we have an Italian spin. Enotria The Last Song is an action RPG game of Souls-like subgenre created by Italian studio in Italian folklore setting. At the moment of creating the video, game is not released yet, but we have a demo to play around. So, in anticipation of Shadow of Earth Tree, why not to have a look? Let's have a quick technical state block first. I played through the demo twice, once on Steam Deck and once on PS5. Enotria is playable on Steam Deck, but I would strongly advise against it. You sort of can make it work at 30 FPS, but you are still going to experience some dips and the game will look like dog shit. This is fine, not every game should fit itself in the constraints of small consoles. What I do not understand is why it doesn't look much better on PS5. Performance wise it was ok, but the graphics are serviceable at best. Don't get me wrong, I always will choose smooth gameplay over graphical fidelity, but in this case it feels like developers were going for something much better looking initially, but had to downscale it because of performance issues. Anyways, it's a bit of a letdown, but nothing suggests it's going to be a huge problem further down the line. In the box department there is a sizable amount of work devs have to do before the release. Quite a few visual bugs, a few times I was stuck in textures, and well, on my third try, second boss refused to fight me. It is not absolutely terrible, but it is not good either. Souls-like subgenre, in my opinion, stays on two main pillars, exploration and boss battles. The Notria demo lets us explore two areas with one boss for each of them. The first area is outer part of city of Quinta and I have to say I quite liked it to be honest. It is more of a linear area with some path you can explore on the side, there are some interconnected corridors and shortcuts, there is a bit of an action on the rooftops. While it was clearly following Souls-like formula, here, implementation and art design felt quite unique. Second area in comparison felt much more generic. It is competently crafted in terms of navigation and shortcuts and sacred location, but it doesn't feel authentic. Weird blue shades everywhere in combination with not the greatest graphics do not make any service to this area either. On top of that, this area features running and fighting on the trees, what I consider a very annoying experience at best of times. And Notria takes it to absolutely another level. The branches you walk on are very narrow, it's quite easy to fall off even by simply running. Forget about fighting someone or dodging projectiles. Camera in Enotria makes it even worse. For some reason, when you lock onto the high target, camera also starts facing up, bringing point of view closer to the character, obscuring the lower half of the body. Even on the sturdy ground, it doesn't feel good. But imagine not being able to see what's under your feet when you're fighting on top of extremely narrow branches. Yeah, it sucks. After the extreme success of Sekiro, everyone tries to shift focus to parries nowadays, implementing some sort of posture that is depleted not only by attacks, but by parries as well. And it makes sense, players do enjoy this concept, though a rare game captures it right. No trick goes the same direction, there are no shields in this game at all, so you can't really block. Unlike Sekiro or Lies of P, dodging in Notre has a very solid amount of iframes. Enemies has a posture bar that you are trying to feel with either attacks or parries, and feeling it will stun them and expose them for a critical strike. First of all, I want to take some time to say that both visual and sound design play a huge part in the level of satisfaction a player gets when performing a parry. Just compare this to 
do this. It is not as terrible as the pixie dust sound from Lords of the Fallen, by the way check out the review, but it is nowhere near as good as top dogs such as Sekiro or Lies of P. In animation, your character parries by raising their left arm? Seriously? Parry frames are generous enough and the reward for pulling off the parry is solid. The punishment for missing the timing is... I'm not even sure how to classify it. If you miss your parry window, you will take some damage, not too much, but you also will be staggered, staggered for quite a long time. However, enemies are fairly slow and usually you can roll out of trouble. So when you miss the parry, it is not really punishing in terms of health, but it is very punishing in terms of upsetting the pace. Game really works well and promotes you being aggressive, staying with the enemy, parry attack and create pressure, but the moment you fail it becomes quite annoying and tedious for the next few seconds. For comparison, in Sekiro, missed parry will not impact enemy posture, but it will only break your posture if it is already fully filled. In Lies of P, you will receive cheap damage, so if you continue missing your parries, you will eventually die, or you will have to heal. As you can see, with those approaches the game tries to maintain the combat flow longer rather than interrupting it at the first player's mistake. I believe approach in an ultra negatively impacts player's experience, which is a bit of a shame because as I said, as long as you don't fuck it up, it actually feels quite good. Now since the basics of combat are clear, let's check out boss fights. There are two available in the demo, three if you count the training one, but I don't. First boss could be a good entry boss in isolation. Decent set of moves, some are easier to parry, some easier to dodge, some have gaps to attack him in between. The problem however is that you fight an elite enemy with essentially the same moveset a few minutes before you get to this boss. Many games reuse bosses as elite enemies, but this usually happens in different order. You first fight the boss and later, when you become stronger, it becomes an elite enemy, not the other way around. Also, the fact that we have this situation happening within a 4 hour demo is not boosting my confidence in the amount of reusable content in the full game. The second boss was just fine with the exception of the bug I experienced on Steam Deck. I think feeling from both of the bosses could be much better if the core mechanics with parry were not so weird. Last thing I wanted to quickly touch on is builds, leveling and all that stuff. There is a bit of a change compared to regular soul stuff with perks and aspects, but to be honest I didn't feel the huge impact of it during the demo, it might later influence how the player approaches the build, but at this stage I can't really comment on it. Overall, I am afraid that the Notre is going to be another bleak imitator of what From Software achieved, and it is a shame. Developers clearly have their own artistic vision and it shows in the first area, but unfortunately it fades off later. Combat does some parts very well, but completely undoing all good work by a few weird decisions later. Game is not released yet, and there is a possibility that some of those issues can be addressed before but I would not hold my breath.